Yeah, we have a lot of exciting things on the horizon. New Jersey is certainly at the forefront of what that's going to look like. We have three locations in New Jersey, uh, tremendous growth inside of that market, want to deploy continued brands inside of that market, want to bring new products, new innovation to the New Jersey market. Certainly the East Coast appears to be innovation starved. That gives everybody an opportunity to be able to carve out a good consumer set, make sure that your patients and your customers have the best products available to them. Whether that's through vertical integration or through partnerships, we have great partnerships with two brands inside of the market, Timeless and Groom. Uh, we have close relationships where they work out of our facility. And so those, those produce really great relationships for us to be able to learn to communicate a little bit better. In a state like New Jersey, you want to be close to your zip codes. Like our perspective from an Ianthus point of view, we want to be close to the people. We want right. to be able to be close to what they want and what their needs are and to be able to service them to the best of our ability with great products. We are back with another episode of Media Unshackled, meeting fantastic individuals, and we are fortunate to be joined by Richard, who represents one of the big dogs. Make me give me a dog sound. Arr, 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 one of the big dogs in the global cannabis ecosphere. Oh, there's like a hundred companies out there. Not yeah, to, there not are. To, not to yep. limit you down to a hundred, but yep. there's like forty thousand cannabis companies out there. But there's a hundred cannabis companies that are moving and shaking and dancing around state to state, doing kind of things. Some are publicly traded, some are privately owned. They generally call them MSOs, but the MSOs is not a derogatory term. I can remind people of that. It's derogatory. The MSO does derogatory things. Right. But it's uh, just an MSO. There are plenty of multi-state operators that operate, do it well. Multi-state. And do it's it right. fantastic. Correct. And I am this is one of them. So we're here with Richard. Yes. How are you doing? Very nice to meet you guys. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, how long have you been involved in the cannabis industry? I've been in the cannabis industry since 2019. So it's been an exciting journey for me. I'm coming up on my uh, five-year anniversary and... No shortage of uh, events oh, that are going to go in the book. Was your first project Ianthus? No, my first project was Grassroots Cannabis. I joined Grassroots Cannabis, which was based out of Chicago, Illinois. At the time, it was the largest privately held cannabis company in the, in the country. Okay. It was acquired by Cureleaf. Then joined Cureleaf. Yes. was with them for right. a while. And then I joined Ianthus that July was of last Andy. year. Was Andy involved with Grassroots Cannabis? Andy. Andy or Adam? I met a guy in Scottsdale who sold out from Grassroots Cannabis. But what does matter? All right. But, but, but fantastic. So you Grassroots, yep. Cureleaf, then you went to? And then I went to Ianthus. I've been there since July of uh, 2023. So I'm coming up on six, seven months, seven months, eight months. I don't know. Dog years. Could be 14 years. Mm. Like. And what is Cannabis your years are. Title? <laughs> what, what is your job? Yeah, I'm the chief executive officer of the organization. I sit You're on the, the board CEO of Ianthus. I, I am. I'm a, I look a little uh, younger than I than I am. So Nice to meet you. <laughs> this is what we do at Benzinga. <laughs> We're just networking, and you're experience our networking live. You yeah. didn't know him before this show. No, we never met. Yep. But now yeah. we do. Hey, Richie. Nice hey, Max. This is why he's got a man shake, by the way, I which I absolutely he's love. He's a good-looking young man. We're getting to know him and stuff. No, no flirting over here. Hey, That's now. Right. Let's talk. Let's right. keep it professional, Max. Always. He's the CEO of Ianthus here, okay? So he's hanging out here at Benzinga, which it indicates Benzinga's the place to be because be. you can bump into the CEO of Ianthus. Right, and get him on a podcast. Tell us, yeah. uh, where is I? how did Ianthus start? And where is it at now? Yeah, I had this been a large organization. It's one of the first publicly traded cannabis companies. Which is so cool. Many mo moons Very ago. Cool. So the first CSE, public THX, T. Yep. It's up in Canada. So uh, we're, we're on the stock exchange up there. And uh, we've been thriving in the different areas where we've been. And uh, after the recapitalization of the organization, we now have seven states, 36 dispensaries across our footprint. Uh, nice. Here in Florida, we have 18 locations here in Florida, continuing to grow inside of this market. So uh, half of your market, half half of the half locations are here, are here in, Florida. in Florida. Okay. Yep. Seven states. What states are you in? Yeah, so we're in Nevada, Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts. All That's open, it. live operating. Yep, yeah. All wow. open, all live and operating. Great footprint. Really great assets. We're in New York. We have four dispensaries, one in Staten Island, okay. Hudson Valley, a little north of Westchester, okay. one in Brooklyn, okay. uh, and then one in uh, Ithaca that will be opening shortly. Interesting. Okay. Nice. I grew up in Jersey, so it's like... It's, it's three, not, three it's, locations in Jersey. We're in Jersey. In Saucon, Gloucester Township, and Atlantic City. Oh, shit. Look at yeah. you guys. I love it. Okay. Yep. So as, as so you're at 18 in Florida, 18 in other states, what is your... You got retails... Uh, does Ianthus have any brands that are owned by Ianthus MPX, right? Yeah, MPX is, uh, is an Ianthus brand. So we have MPX, uh, we have Fruitful, we have Anthology. 
Um, those are the markets that we, those are the brands that we deploy across most of our, most of our markets. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Florida, we have an edible brand called Moods. Uh, so this is a market where we're pretty excited with that. It's going to look like solventless gummies. Those are technologies that we'll take across all the different, uh, different footprints that we have. But solventless we gummies. Yep. Yep. Water, Science. pressure, and ice. And cultivations, you have cultivations in the vertical states. We do, yep. We have the full full shebang in Arizona, in Florida. We have processing only in Maryland. We have uh, full cultivation and processing in uh, New Jersey. We have the full shebang in Massachusetts. Um, and then we're building a grow facility in New York. Nice. And I can buy stock in your company. You can. I like you. you can. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I don't know. Th th those guys are going to win. The goal is to make our shareholders very wealthy. So okay. it would Fair be enough. nice for you to have Fair enough. Enough. No, the journey. But, but the reality is, if you look closely at all these stocks and you Publicly look traded, at privately at owned. how they're structured, yeah. their footprint and stuff, when it goes federally legal, you're going to be able to ride that stock market a little bit of a bounce. Yeah. And you got to carefully analyze that. I mean, just for the investors out there, call me. We can go through the whole thing. If you pay me enough money, I'll analyze the whole thing. But now that I know the CEO of Ianthus, I just call him. That's right. Simple text message. We're good to go. There you no, go. No, that's no, an invite. No, but but, that, but that's really, really cool. And you guys have a great footprint. I, I have a question for you because a lot of people talk about federal legalization and how it's going to happen. And you're going to have to ride that wave, whatever comes out of the gate. Okay? It's going to be kind of weird. Yeah. But if people ask you, how do you want manufacturing and cultivation to be? Do you want to continue with this vertical model in Arizona, this vertical model in, in Florida, and you don't have cultivations in a few other states, and you have manufacturing in some of the states, and ah, it's like pulling your hair out, and you have a certain amount of capital to invest, and you're like, yeah, can we just design a system where we just have a big manufacturing plant in California and make our MPX there and just send it to everyone? Or do we want a little MPX manufacturing thing in all the different states? If you could wave a magic wand, what would be best for business? It's hard because there's so many different it's a tough models. Question, right? There's so many different models that are out there. You try to take your learnings from the industries that have already done it. You have yep. the two models of alcohol and tobacco, which everybody references the most. They don't own their full supply chain. Like uh, Philip Morris isn't off trying to figure out how to buy as many tobacco fields as they can. They tobacco let, plantations. Yeah, they yeah. let them figure out what they're best at. Right. Then everybody finds their core competency. And cannabis has taken a little bit of a different route. You know, I think that we have. We produce great genetics, we produce great products, we have a lot of great technical science that exists in all of our different locations. That's not just unique to Iantha, certainly all of the operators have their core competencies yeah. that they mm -hmm. do really well. We want to make sure that our customers and our patients are all taken care of in a very strong way. I do think that one of these models is going to win out. The most likely model that's going to win out, ah, it's hard to say, but it's probably something that it has a little bit of a divestiture of the vertical footprint so that you can focus on the core aspects. It's, who you are as a business. You got to decide whether you're a retail business or you're going to be a manufacturing business and really put all your chips into one core right. competency. I am so glad that I do not have to sit in your chair. <laughs> so, many, so, so many juggling tough. pieces of management. I mean, you have management. to make investment capital decisions. Yeah. I mean, forget all the employee and HR resource problems that you have to deal with. Just those are ordinary to business. But you have to deploy capital. You have to deploy resources. You can think, what's going to happen next? Do I build all these giant manufacturers? MPX is a great product, by the way. I don't know if you mm -hmm. know MPX. But MPX Correct. should be available nationwide. So do you take a, a, a million dollars and go do an MPX manufacturing center in Illinois? Are you guys in Illinois? Not in Illinois. Okay. Do I do my MPX in Illinois? Yep. Is that where I take my yep. money? And what's that going to look like? Because five years now, federal legalization happens, and my big MPX facility in Arizona could supply the entire country. So is that a waste of capital? You That's have correct. to make these calls. That's correct. you got to figure out where your capital is going to be deployed the best, not only for your business interests, but your, for your investors and for your patients and your customers and your consumers. But it requires everybody as a business to understand what are you great at. And you can't, you can't lie to yourself. Like You're really good at certain yeah. things, but you can't be great at everything. And so you take those core competencies and you roll them out the best that you can to ensure that your products are reached by as many people as possible. MPX is a fantastic brand. We have the best right. concentrates that, that so around. You I mean, are. Tremendous inside of the Arizona and market. One of the first. Well, he's yep. in Arizona, yep. yeah, so he knows yep, them Yeah, correct. Around. So really, uh, really they're strong. they're outside of MPX, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, correct. We roll MPX out in all the different markets to, yeah. uh, to where we exist. And so you want to have a really strong footprint, but you would love to have centralized distribution. Like, my background is primarily specialty retail, started my 
career at Abercrombie & Fitch, very familiar with specialty retail central distribution, deploy it out to the masses. That's certainly easier than the state-by-state -state model to which mm -hmm. we work out today, but it's yeah. all about supply chain management. Like one of the differentiators, I think, of organizations is how well do you manage your overall supply chain? If you've overbuilt and overcultivated and you have too much supply, the problem you get into is you get this price compression. You got to monetize your crops, price come down. That's not really good for, for business. And so you want to be able to support your supply chain the best way possible. There's ways to do that um, in all of the different models. Our supply chain is very well balanced in the different markets, but I would love to be able to have a centralized distribution, to be able to put MPX concentrates everywhere, to be able to have the best flour and the craft grows that we have in different markets, to be able to spread those genetics into different markets. That's really the big win, I think, if you get federal legalization. Yeah, and you guys have good genetics, and you can, I mean, I, I, I just want to make a comment before I get into talk about genetics and flower. I feel like I'm, like, watching a basketball game, like, and I'm seeing, like, LeBron James here. You know what I'm saying? Because... <laughs> I love it. Because, because you, know, you know... I love it. You, you have a natural uh, area of expertise and skills, and you're a really smart individual, and you have to navigate these unknown waters, and you're getting better. Juggling, and better, yeah, and, and you're, you're, the, those CEOs, those CFOs, those individuals that are navigating through, surviving, and sticking with the cannabis yeah. industry during these 10, 15, 20 formative years they build the team. are going to come out like 10 times as talented mm -hmm. as those individuals who might have just stayed with Abercrombie and yeah, Fitch. That's right. Which is easy. No, yeah, I appreciate that. I, this I, is hard. That's why I got that feeling from you. Well, I think once the video game of cannabis comes out, I hope that my power rating is 10. <laughs> like, that's what we're going for, so we'll see if that plays out that way. Yes. No. That's... Now, if the video game of cannabis came out, would it be an RPG? Or would it be like a live action shooter? Or would it be like some sort of like weird dystopian puzzle box thing like mist probably starts with mist moves right. to live action shooter and then <laughs> ends up with an rpg, RPG where yeah, you're like correct. choose your level yeah, you know, yeah, choose your correct. path so are you a wizard right. or a warrior <laughs> ianthus uh retail what is ianthus retail known as what uh, are all the seven states different or what yeah we have uh, five different retail brands okay oh in, interesting yep, five different retail brands so in massachusetts we have mayflower okay in new jersey we have mpx so it's named mpx uh, same as our concentrate brand in Maryland, Arizona, Nevada, it's Health for Life. Yes. Okay. In uh, Florida, it is Grow Healthy. Right. And in New York, it is B. Uh, and my next Just question B, is... B, like the is letter B? B. B, happy. Ah, okay. B, courageous. B. So, B. as the CEO of Ian Ianthus, is just... Uh, I'll give you a second to think about your answer. But is just, just like a, 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 a still or a why? Or are you experimenting with the different ones to see which one works best? so that they all can be named the same? Or is there a goal to name them the same? Or how do you think through that? Because that must be a little bit of a challenge as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you want to be able to build brand equity, not That's only in products. That's a tough question, right? Yeah, That's it is. a good question. Very good question. Yeah, very good question. Thank you. Uh, you want thank to build you. brand equity, not only in products, but also in your retail, uh, your retail locations. You want yes. customers to have an experience. It can be complicated to provide five different experiences. Not only that, but from an internal management perspective, your assets are deployed five different ways, which is not efficient. I think there's a world in which we try to explore what the right retail brand name is for our business and want to make sure that we uh, position down that path in the right way, select which states should be able to be transitioned to a new name first. Uh, that's certainly on our horizon is to be able to figure yes. out which way we want to go and how quickly we can get there. I'm, 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 I'm pushing for health for life. I like that. Uh, that's your bet. No, <laughs> just, no, I just I'm an Arizona guy. And that's, yeah, that's right. You know, I I, I knew uh, Beth who was involved in this a long time ago. Yep. I talked to Beth in, in many many years, um, many many years. But uh, but Health for Life was a uh, Arizona thing, so we could say that's an Arizona original. Yeah, you it, know, it, and, it is. And, well, Be Happy is clever. Mayflower is really good. I like that too. Yeah, it's yep. a tough choice. I would hate to put any of those to bed. You know? uh, it's, it's hard because you build patient base and customer base that are familiar yeah. with your businesses. Uh, right. But you want to be consistent in who you are. And as you start to think about what expansion looks like, we want to be into more states. We want to be able to expand the business. You want to do so in a way that resonates with the most consumers, provides people with a good, clear perspective as to who you are. I'm glad we're going to be friends because you have <laughs> you, you are extremely talented, extremely knowledgeable. You know your way around your, your, you know, your business management, your skill set. But you also are right in the middle of answering these really tough questions yeah. that aren't usually asked. 
Yeah, you're doing a good job. Or, or to this degree. Yeah, this is this is pretty helpful for me. So it's uh, again, hopefully this goes into my uh, my We're, video game profile. So yeah, great. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna leave here and buy some Iantha stock. You should get a jersey. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what's your number? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You should get a jersey uh, and be right. like, here we go. We threw him through the ring. All right. So what's next for Iantha's? Well, where are we gonna see you guys? We got a pretty good uh, overview of where Iantha's is at, where you who you guys are doing now. But what's next? Yeah, we have a lot of exciting things on the horizon. New Jersey is certainly at the forefront of what that's going to look like. We have three locations in New Jersey, uh, tremendous growth inside of that market, want to deploy continued brands inside of that market, want to bring new products, new innovation to the New Jersey market. Certainly the East Coast appears to be innovation starved. I think that the innovation hasn't made its way to the East Coast as much as it has inside of the West Coast. That gives everybody an opportunity to be able to carve out a good consumer set, make sure that your patients and your customers have the best products available to them. Whether that's through vertical integration or through partnerships, we have great partnerships with two brands inside of the market, Timeless and Groon. Uh, we have close relationships where they work out of our facility. And so those produce in New really, Jersey. in New Jersey, those produce really great relationships for us to be able to learn to communicate a little bit better, watch how they communicate, build lifestyle communications, build strong culture within the communities. And in a state like New Jersey, you want to be close to your zip codes. You want to know your yeah, consumer. You like our perspective from an Ianthus point of view, like there are a lot of MSOs that have footprints across many different states. But do those MSOs take the time and attention to learn their zip codes, learn their community, uh, interact with their community, treat each dispensary as its own little entity. That's how we think about the business. So we want to be close to the people. We want right. to be able to be close to what they want and what their needs are and to be able to service them to the best of our ability with great products. And so that's how we approach the New Jersey market. That's how we approach every market. That's brilliant though, because Jersey, your zip code does matter. Matters. It matters. <laughs> It matters. It matters. Hell, the three, the, the th whatever it is, your area code on your phone used to matter. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> where are you from? <laughs> so, uh, you guys think you might be, like, looking for more retail outlets in other states as well? Yeah, I think that we would certainly be uh, open to looking where we can explore and expand. I mean, expansion is certainly in the horizon for us. We have a really strong footprint of business. Uh, this is version 2.0 of our business. I mean, there's a lot of things that we're doing that are unique and very different. Uh, a lot of things that are going to be coming out that are exciting for our business and for the industry in general, and it's going to be Really cool to watch how we take these things, build them to new levels, bring on new customers, build on new patients, commercialize new products, innovate in different ways, communicate in different ways. Sky's the limit for what we're going to do, so it's an exciting time for us in this business. Amita is going to be focused mostly on brands and manufacturing going into the future. We wish you luck on the retail adventures. I do not like the retail storefront wars and the protectionist stuff that happens at the local and state level and stuff. Don't like to get involved with that. I have strong opinions about that kind of stuff. But we're a big fan, fan of the brands and the manufacturing centers. And I'm thinking about myself, MPX. You know, are you guys in Maryland? We are in Maryland. Damn it. I had a good processing center in Maryland that I could have introduced you to. I'll, I'll, hey, I'll find text me. Text I'll, me. Well, yeah. you, you're happy. <laughs> he's like, no, he's using these partnerships. Yeah. No, no, but I, process, I got a processing center that's being stood up by a bunch of social equity guys. No, I that's know. That's looking for really strong brands to bring through. I know. And you're guaranteed 25% shelf space if you come out of one of those social equity processing centers. So I was trying to do MPX a favor. He didn't say text me. Uh, well, mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't close the door on you. He, yeah, said, say, he, said, say. he said text All me. All right, we'll, we'll go do <laughs> some business now <laughs> at Benzinga. But Richard, it, is, it has been a pleasure to get to know you. I appreciate it, the time, is, guys. And, and, and you know what? I'm going to spend a lot of time figuring out who to invest in when about six months before federal legalization happens. And I'm glad I met you because now I'm going to go run out and buy some Iantha stock. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. Like, you're a really nice guy. Love to hear knowledgeable. that. Love to hear that. Don't sleep so, on us. we got some exciting things coming down the pipeline. No, it's, it's very good. And my best to your, the brands that are underneath your umbrella. Uh, I think brands will be the future of the cannabis space. Uh, there's, you know, it's, it's a global market. Retail is so challenging, so difficult. There's so many nuances. The brands, I think, will penetrate through a lot of that and get directly to consumers and patients eventually. Well, so brand loyalty is a big 100%. Thing. Yeah, you want to yeah. cover all the different spectrums between Black Label and our vape brands, MPX and our concentrate brands. You want to make sure you cover the full spectrum to make sure that people are uh, receiving the medicine and products they want for their version of wellness. And so that's what we're after. So well, send me some MPX hats and I'll wear those. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much for hey, joining great us. Great to spend time with you guys. Another episode of Media Unshackled. These are the quality individuals that you meet at Benzinga. Don't miss this show next year. Don't miss the next one. Thanks, Max. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>